Happy Memorial Day and welcome to Fabulous Lake Tahoe, your local's guide to the very best of America's year-round playground. I'm Jack Durst. I'm here at the Mount Blue Casino Resort for the first ever Wildfire Awareness Week kickoff event. We got a lot of amazing events going on this Memorial Day weekend in Lake Tahoe. This is just one of them. I just got back from an amazing concert with Trey Stone that I got to film for my channel. If you click the annotation, you can see my video of Trey Stone performing at Base Camp Pizza's Memorial Day weekend kickoff event. It was pretty awesome. So I'm excited to be here at the Wildfire Awareness Week event because they have balloons, they have Smokey the Bear, they have all kind of great presentations on wildfire awareness and how to make your home fire safe through dispensable space and other things. So check it out. Hi, I'm Eric Gavon with Tahoe Douglas Fire Department. I'm the fire marshal here and this is our kickoff event for wildfire awareness. And we have a pancake breakfast over here and balloon rides. And um, we, but most importantly, we have a lot of good information for the public. And we're really pleased with the event. We're expecting about 600 people out here. Um, we've got multiple agencies from around the basin. Um, the Forest Service has been involved with us. Um, we've got Cooperative Extension involved, um, uh, Incline Fire, um, and Cal Fire. We've just got a lot of agencies out here and, and so many I know that I've missed a few. But we've been organizing this event for over six months and I think it's a very successful event. We're very pleased. Thanks for coming out and supporting this event. Um, I hope that you all got some food. The pancakes are still being made. They're going to continue that till 11 o'clock. Uh, there's a fire extinguisher demonstration here. If you've never used a fire extinguisher before, be sure to check that out. Um, it's great fun for the kids to learn about it. There's an ember house over here. You learn how homes can be burned by flying brands and embers. That's a great thing to look at to learn how to protect your home. Uh, also behind us over here is a juniper toss. We like a, a program called Junk the Junipers. Junipers carry fire very readily and we like to see those removed from uh, the perimeter of your home. And we don't like to see those in that uh, zero to 30 area of your home for sure. So. Stage, there. I guess it'd be your right for the stage. They're donning up and they got their uh, their structure gear on. So that's what we use in an urban interface fire. If we're fighting structures, they need to have all that gear on um, to protect themselves. That's really important. That's their armor, and that's what they need to be safe. Now, obviously, when we do a wildland fire, a brush fire. That gear is not practical. We wouldn't be able to have all that gear on. It's way too heavy. The guys would be exhausted. They wouldn't be able to fight the fire because they'd be physically unable to do that. So that's the structure gear. And over here, if you bring your attention over here, Cal Fire, they're going to demonstrate what they use for wildland or brush fire. On, brush Fire. Fires. And this is their brush gear that they use. You can notice a big difference in the weight. You don't quite have the same insulation capabilities. It's a lot lighter, so they're more agile on the fire line. And yet it affords some protection against fire brands and fire exposure. So it, it's designed to keep them a little cooler, a little bit more agile, but yet provide for protection. So that is actually the wildland gear you're seeing right there. And you can imagine they got to have a helmet on. They have their... That's his pack he's putting on right now that we usually have some fusies or flares in there because we'll actually use sometimes fire to fight fire and we do back burns and other things so they'll have usually some fusies in that. They'll also have some, some water. Um, a lot of times you'll see if he turns around there you'll see a blue bag on the back. That's his fire shelter. Now we have a booth over by the water, over there by the balloon, where you guys can actually get into a fire shelter and, and see what a fire shelter is all about. But hopefully our firefighters never have to use a fire shelter. And uh, we have a special guest with us today that's going to make a few remarks, our state fire marshal, Pete Mulvahill, is going to be here. And he's joining me on the stage right now. And I'll turn the mic over to him. In the Tahoe Basin, the environment is uh, a key concern for most people. And one of the messages we want to get out to you today is it, an out of control wildfire causes not only injuries, property damage, but severe damage to the environment. And one way we'd like to enlist your assistance in that is to reduce the fuels. That will in uh, turn reduce the risk. 
There are a large number of fire service professionals from all sorts of agencies, local and state, uh, both sides of the basin here today. Feel free to talk to them and ask them any questions. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm with the Forest Service. I'm also with Generation Green, a local club at the high school up here. And I'm at this fair today to tell people about tree identification. I'm also here to tell people about fuel reduction, which is very important to the Lake Tahoe Basin. And Generation Green is a club at the high school and we have a partnership with the Forest Service and we help give kids opportunities to have summer internships during the summer and help them get jobs through the Forest Service later on in their lives. Hello, my name is Thaddeus Wilkinson. I'm a firefighter for CAL FIRE, the Amador El Dorado unit, Station 43, assigned engine 2751. This is my first season with CAL FIRE. I started as a fire explorer at the age of 14, worked my way up through a fire academy and EMT class. I'm now working with Cameron Park as well as a volunteer. Um, being in the fire service is very re rewarding, uh, lots of hard work, and uh, it's a very satisfying job. Uh, long summers and a long time away from family, but it's worth what we do and I love the job. Hi, my name is Kyle Jacobson. I'm a Fuels Battalion Chief for the U.S. Forest Service here on the Lake Tahoe Basin. Just wanted to let you know a little bit about what we do around here. We are responsible for fire suppression and prescribed fire conducting fuels treatments. We conduct about 1,200 to 1,500 acres of prescribed fire here every year, trying to lower the risk of catastrophic fire and improving forest health. Hi, my name is Lisa Heron, and I work for the U.S. Forest Service here in Lake Tahoe. And this whole event is designed to let people know about um, wildfire awareness and defensible space and how important it is to clear the brush and dead materials off your home and off your property. So it really helps out firefighters. Um, we, so we're, today is the first day of Wildfire Awareness Week and we have things going on throughout the week. I also want to recognize Cooperative Extension Services from uh, both UC Davis and the University of Nevada Reno for a lot of their excellent and outstanding education work behind the scenes. And uh, remember, reduce the fuel, reduce the risk. Hi there, good morning. My name is Daria Vogt and I'm with the Master Gardener Program here in Lake Tahoe. And I have with me Christy Doherty also. She's with me today. And we're here uh, actually to talk to people in the area and to uh, help them with their gardening needs. We're out of UC Davis. We have an office here now. And we use research-based information to help people make the right decisions for their yards. And one of the main thing is, things here is, of course, to be wildfire safe. So we are promoting drought tolerant plants. Um, we're talking about uh, uh, the 100 foot lean, clean, and green areas of your yard so that you will be fire safe. So uh, we have talks and demonstrations in the area in South Lake Tahoe. Uh, throughout the summer we have information here that will tell you when those talks are so you can come and attend them and get the, the most knowledge and education necessary to do the best for your yard. Okay, can you tell me a little about a few plants that are really good for fire safety? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Christy. Okay. This is Christy Doherty from Cal Fire. Um, hi, I'm actually um, I was recently retired from Cal Fire, so I, I used to be a forester, but now I'm a, a gardener. And anyway, plants that you might not want to have within that 30-foot zone around your house are sometimes actually some of the plants that grow here already uh, because they tend to be highly flammable. And some of those are the pines and the firs. Uh, maybe you have some ornamental spruces and in particular ornamental junipers that you would not necessarily want planted near your home. So we're here to help you decide what plants you want there and other plants that you might put there instead of those uh, more flammable plants. Uh, I'm not going to go away without mentioning that uh, manzanita is another one you need to watch out for, huckleberry oak, uh, chinkapin. Those are some of the more flammable uh, things that if they're growing in your yard, you may want to replace them. Next, 
if we could make sure our Zephyr crew is ready. Uh, the Zephyr fire crew down here is going to be running a chipper. And if you've never seen a chipper run before, it's, it's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of power, a lot of intensity there. Most people saw it on Fargo. But we won't be doing anything like that, <laughs> okay? We're not chipping any people. We'll have a safe area around there, and we're going to run a chipper. It actually has the sound of a jet engine, so it's, it is quite loud, but it's pretty cool to see they can chip some pretty sizable um, limbs and brush, and they're going to talk to you about that. And that's on the other side of this ladder truck here, and that's going to take place right now. Good morning. My name is Ed Cook. I'm with Ed Cook Tree Service. Been in business here in the South Lake Tahoe area for 32 years. Been doing defensible space, fire safety, forest health the whole time. Used to be a logger, know quite a bit about trees. Uh, we've got some examples here of some of the diseases. We've got some bug kill trees, some of the local insect uh, reasons that trees die. Um, these programs here, like today, are do an amazing amount of, of knowledge, opening people's eyes to how important it is to thin your forest. Uh, you, there's so many benefits to a thin forest and thinning it out, making it healthier. You get better tree growth. The trees are stronger. The insects can't kill them as easy. Uh, you get you need that canopy thinned to to really help. You know, and and it's just I could go on for all day here, but just getting these programs out like this today and opening people's eyes to the benefits to healthy forest is is all I've got to say okay well the insect damage probably is maybe number one in, in the fact when you get a drought season like this we've had a couple of shy winters the drought the trees get weak so the insects get stronger we've always got insects out there but the trees can fight them off they can live together but now you start getting a drought the trees start dying you get some ips beetles pine beetle things like that it kills the trees and then it spreads, and it spreads and gets worse and worse. And even for the forest fire to thin it out, then you don't have a forest fire danger. And when the forest fire comes through, if you've got it all thin and no underbrush and your trees are spaced, then maybe you can prolong getting a crown fire that's gonna just take the whole forest out, give the local fire uh, and, and EMS response teams more time to respond, get the fire out before the tr fire gets into a crown fire. Hi, I'm Susie Coker. I'm with the University of California Cooperative Extension. I'm an extension forester for the Central Sierra region. I'm here in South Lake Tahoe. And I'm part of the Living with Fire program, which is uh, uh, started by the University of Nevada Cooperative Extension and been in uh, place for about 20 years. Um, and what it is is uh, an outreach and education program to help homeowners know what to do to reduce the risk of wildfire. So our theme for our campaign this year is reduce the fuels, reduce the risk. Um, and we are having this event today to bring people out to um, let them know what they can do to reduce the fuels. So I think you've been around to the event, you've seen our little um, booths and games and all that. Um, specifically the Living With Fire program has helped um, define what defensible space is. Now let me show you this in the Tahoe Basin. Uh, this was a negotiated uh, definition of defensible space. In the past there have been issues with uh, concern about bare ground uh, because of the need to keep the lake clean. So in the past sometimes homeowners were given the suggestion that they leave pine needles all over their ground all the way up to their house, um, which is really not a good defensible space practice. So all the fire agencies, water quality agencies got together uh, with TRPA and agreed on what we should be telling homeowners to do so that we don't all tell them to do different things because that really makes homeowners annoyed. So um, our suggestions in the first five feet, uh, nothing that's flammable and that goes actually really well with required best management practices in Tahoe because a lot of times gravel trenches uh, for infiltration are prescribed and those are non-flammable so we like that and just recently actually we upgraded the recommendations to say we don't even want like wooden boards bordering the gravel drip line because you know the fire will burn right up to the house. We learned a lot of things during the South Lake Tahoe um, Angora fire in 2007 that are um, included in the recommendations. So we have thousands of these 
We hand them out to the fire departments. If you call for a defensible space inspection, you can, um, they'll come and bring it to your house and go over it with you. Um, and it's the uh, current information. We have it on our website as well. So it's livingwithfire.info, which is a site for Nevada and Tahoe. And then the livingwithfire.info slash Tahoe is the site specifically with Tahoe recommendations. And like I said, our recommendations have to be a little different because of our regional government and specific ordinances in Tahoe. Hi there, this is Christy Boseman with the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency and we are at Mont Blue today for the start of Wildfire Awareness Week, May 25th. And we are here to try and encourage property owners to create dispensable space around their homes in anticipation of the possibility of a catastrophic wildfire. So why should a planning and regulatory and environmental agency care about defensible space here in Tahoe? Well, as we saw with Angora fire, when you have a catastrophic wildfire, it burns down hillsides and that creates tremendous stormwater problems. You know, the, the trees, they keep the soil in place, plants keep the soil in place, and without those, when we have a large storm event, all that water runs right downhill and ends up in our lake and that compromises the clarity of Lake Tahoe. So we are really concerned about have, p encouraging property owners to uh, create defensible space around their homes because every home that has defensible space has less of an opportunity of being part of a catastrophic wildfire that can fly through an area like we saw with Angora, create tremendous amount of both personal uh, property and environmental damage. So. Come on down here to Mont Blue, learn about creating defensible space, or you can see our website at trpa.org. We have lots of information about it. You can contact your fire protection districts. You can go to livingwithfire.org backslash Tahoe and learn how you too can create defensible space around your property, to create your property, to protect your property, protect your home and your neighborhood and our beautiful Lake Tahoe environment. Thank you. That was pretty awesome, huh? So subscribe to Fabulous Lake Tahoe to catch up with all my videos that are coming out this week. I just did a great concert video of Trey Stone. You can get it by clicking on the annotation. Also, there's going to be videos coming up on the first of the month. There's going to be three different videos coming up. I'm going out to the, Ze to the Zephyr Cove Wagon Train Rendezvous and filming the Wagon Train Parade like I do every year. Also coming up next month, very soon after that, I'm going to be showing my video of America's Most Beautiful Bike Ride. And of course, there will be a concert report for the month of June. So thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to Fabulous Lake Tahoe if you haven't already. Thank you and keep Tahoe blue. Bye.